So, before this video starts, yes, this is the same as my other Nexus video, but a little bit different. I don't ramble on about the Uther stuff, I try to stay on point, and if you don't want to watch the explanation of this, I'd recommend... Oh, like, oh, sorry. <laughs> my god. If you don't want to watch the explanation of why I'd recommend the Nexus score, then feel free to skip ahead to the time on the screen now, to where I just built the circuit, so you can slap it onto your next white base, right? But please do not... The circuit is not for everyone, it's for big clans, for those with big bases, and the BCN core, this one right here, just genuinely might be better for you if you're in a small base that doesn't need batteries, and lots of them. Anyways, please enjoy. And, um, you know, I thought I'd give a little shout out, because all of these circuits are created by Ni, nee, and he's pretty famous in the Rust electricity scene, so, you know. But uh, I just want to say thanks to him for being such a great teacher, same with Swift Coyote, you know, they taught me everything I know. But anyway, the Ni nee core, what is it? Well, it is a battery backup system, pretty much. It effectively switches between root power and battery power as needed. This pretty much pairs well with circuits that require 24-7 power with a high drain, such as turrets and your defense in general, your SAM sites, your auto door closes, and raid defense, I guess, or raid detection. Basically, how this system works is it will take your root power, plugs it in, and it uses your root power to power everything with excess power going to charge the batteries. Once root power is no longer enough, let's say 50 in this case, root power doesn't take over, but the batteries do. As you can see, it's still taking power, but this time from the blue side, which is the battery. If I turn this to 75, still the battery, but if we do 76, it is now root power yet again, with one power, I believe, oh, no power going to the battery. So you need 77 power? Wow, I did not know this. You need 77 power to charge the battery. Mm, yes, to charge the battery. That's my bad. My fault. Yeah, that's that's how this system kind of works. But it has a critical flaw. The issue is that if the batteries are destroyed while they are the source power, the core won't switch back to windmills. Now, I'm going to quickly show this off. We'll put this back to, say, 50. Batteries are now charging, as you can see right here. But if I pick up the battery... It doesn't switch back to root power. Now the issue is, this, it, it, your systems will stay off if your batteries are being used and they get destroyed until you're using 75 power again. Oh, but that's not the case. You need 76. So, that's, that's kind of the major issue, is when batteries are the source power. The core won't switch back to windmills unless the root power is enough to so-called reset itself. And after that, it can't switch back to the batteries, so no further problems can occur. Meaning the system won't use batteries again when power is low. Such as... 74. Still powers it, but obviously not enough for all your circuits if you need 75 power. Anyway, the BCN, or the battery check in core essentially fixes the problem that we had over here. Right? This... Pretty much fixes it. Everything that's in black is the same as what you see over here. The colored wires are what's new. So, root power. This small battery, which effectively is free power, you could say. Because this battery won't get drained because the side inputs of the memory cell and the blocker don't require power. Or don't drain power, should I say. So, the core concept stays the same, but now every instance of a so-called critical failure in the battery area will force the core to not use root power, or t sorry, to use root power. Meaning, if both batteries get destroyed, while well, batteries are the power source, this system stays online. And I will quickly show you this, so we will... Hmm, I didn't think this through. Let's use 200 power, okay? And then we disconnect this. So as you can see, we're now using 100, we should be using 100 power. Yep. Let me, uh... Yeah, I didn't really think this through, did I? So as you can see now, batteries are taking the power, which this should also be 200. But, uh... Ew. Let's do 150. Uh, that's why, th so this, okay, the reason why this wasn't working is because we only have two batteries at 200 power. But obviously, you need one extra power 
to go through and block the uh, memory cell, stopping from both of these from activating. And you technically don't need it if you have 200, but it's it's best if you're using 200, have three batteries, because as you can see, it's, uh, it's still outputting 200, because the batteries are still higher than the memory cell. But that's just for future reference. But yeah, as you can see, batteries are power. Now if we pick these up, still stays on because now the power that we're getting from the root source even though it's not enough it's still powering the system because of this little baby this bad boy forces the system to reset pretty much that's that's basically the bcn in a nutshell but i would say the nico and the bcn basically the same system bcn fixes the flaw that the knee has but if you're adding more batteries and wind turbines, you might as well make this circuit. This this little beautiful thing here. I'll have a rust friction link for that as well. But then we have the Nexus. <clears throat> this stands for Knees Energy Exchange and Uninterrupted Supply. This tries to pull some extra use out of the power you generate by charging external batteries once the core batteries are full. As we can see, the, uh, the AND switches that we have here are plugged in to the fully charged on the large batteries. Connect all these up, plug it in to this memory cell, and this green light indicates these batteries are all full and are now powering the two batteries right here in front of me. Okay, so this can be useful for things such as lights, heaters, electric furnaces, and other quality of life things that don't need a backup system. You know, you shouldn't be putting all of your quality of life, your lights, your heaters, and everything onto a battery backup. This system here should primarily be for turrets and SAM sites, but by adding external batteries, and a way to charge them with your root power, wind turbines. You allow turrets and other defense circuits like auto door closers and raid detection to also have their own secondary power backup that acts as a second or third backup that isn't located near the core or the main base, such as placing the externals. This means that all your vital systems stay online, even if all your batteries are destroyed, even if the core is destroyed, your systems will stay online. So let's simulate this. Say this turret is watching our base, and these batteries are in externals, and this is all in core. This here is our root power coming from the Nexus. If I remove it, the, bat the turret still stays on. That's because these battery backups are powering the turret. Pretty nice. So that's, that's kind of why you would want, you know, a Nexus. Is because not only do you have your backup system, but the main fatal flaw of this system is it being centralized in, a, in an area preferably next to your TC, that if this gets destroyed, all of your vital systems go offline. But because you're now powering some external batteries using this core, you have a way to stop the fatal flaw, the one single vulnerability, from turning off your defenses. And that's something that you don't want in a raid. You don't want to be in a raid defense, they're pummeling through, and suddenly your turrets turn off. Because they've destroyed your BCN core. Or your Nexus. This fixes that. Because who's going to blow into an external TC just to destroy a battery that's powering a turret? Now, there is a little issue with this. And that would be turret flip-flops. You can't really do this system with a turret flip-flop. But I'm going to figure out how you can. Because I'm pretty sure you can. And you will be able to do it. I'm going to figure it out. And that will be my next video. But let's get into explaining or building the Nexus, shall we? So how do how do we build it? Well, it's pretty simple. Grab your power source and root combiners. So grab one of this. Take your power source plug it in and then you want to kind of build your you know your nickel you know you, you, you build the nickel or your bcn at this point just like this small battery i didn't pick up a small battery did i small battery Reason why I wanted four. 
Another room by now. Let's grab both our batteries, shall we? Make this blue so it's a bit easier to see. Wrong one, wrong one. It's the outfit I want. Nope. Uh, we want a splitter as well. Which, we'll just put here for now. Right, ball switch. Splitter. Connects up to your root power, which just for sakes I'll make green. Just so you know, green is root power, blue is battery power. This goes into here. Uh, let's say we want 100 on both. 100, and then this needs to be set to 1. We need some extra power. One power. Bring 200 power. This is set to 1. Right. I forgot how to build the socket. No, nope, because this goes into blocker. This goes into the set. This is very important. Blocker goes into set. Small battery goes into memory. Uh, the reset. But that's not right because you need to put your power. You need to do this. This needs to go into a, another branch, set to 1. And this going into this. This is another memory cell. You know, I'm very bad at doing this, I'm going to be honest with you. So... This goes to it's kind of hard to follow along, but hopefully you do understand a little bit. This goes into reset. So the wrong one. You want an on switch? Editing me here. The Nexus actually requires uh, two, e like two, four, six, and even set of batteries. So you can use the on switch correctly. So if you have five batteries, for example, either remove one or place it on a sixth. So. So, first splitter, this goes into your main batteries. Make that light blue. And this obviously then goes into the memory cells. Uh, set button. And then you take this out, put it into a splitter, and this splitter will then be the one that powers all your other batteries. So obviously, something like that. There you go. And that's pretty much the circuit. I'm trying to think if I've missed anything. If I made it wrong. I'm just trying to check over now. No, looks right. But that's that's kind of the circuit, pretty much. So um, yeah. Just to show you that it still works. Let's get a light. Let's get blue. Plug that into there. Root power, obviously. Let's uh, pick up the root power. Still works because it's now taken from batteries. Plug root power back in. Root power now takes over. Now you might be wondering, this input. It's it's still taking power. No, it's not. Batteries are still getting charged. Yep. So you'll you'll still you know gain power, which is pretty nice. But yeah, that's that's the circuit. That's the video. Uh, thank you, and please I don't know like subscribe stuff like that. Thank you very much.
Have a good day.